Thank you so much for tuning in to another interview series at the Lounge with Brunomics. Our guest this week is Lisa from Copenross. Hi, Lisa. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. I'm Jerry. I'm Vic. We're going to be drinking some beer, courtesy of, well, Copen Ross. <laughs> so uh, we'll get into that in a little bit, but as always, since we're going to, you know, talk about beer, let's let's drink it first. That always helps. So big shout out to Lisa for providing the beer on this episode. She said she brought some of her favorites. So first up, we have the wait. Tacoma Kolsch. Uh, the E9 Brewing Company Tacoma Brew Kolsch coming in at 4.8%. It's a filtered Kolsch style ale that is light, clean, and delicious, in other words. But we'll go with that. On Untapped, we were rocking uh, 3.41. Oh. Not bad for a Kolsch. What do you know about this one? Why did you guys pick th this beer, Miss Lee? It's, it's new. It's one of the first we've had from E9, and I thought it was delicious and a good, um, the weather's getting kind of warm, so a nice, light beer. Perfect. Easy and drinking. I've never heard of E9 until like the last few weeks, and I've seen them popping up all over the place. And this is like the second or third beer I've had from these guys so far, and it, they seem like a pretty solid brewery. <laughs> it's always a difficult word for me to say, but Washington does a good job with beer. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Always a fan of them. Um, what do you think, Vic? Tasty. Uh, Kolsch's are one of my favorite, honestly. It's such an easy drinker. Um, the way that you're able to just continue to drink it we call it a crushable beer as it were um high drinkability um it's a really great beverage as a whole great for summer so i think you made a fantastic choice lisa thank you thank you even though today's weather kind of sucks it is a little <laughs> rainy today but still good day for beer yeah. but it was a good <laughs> excuse not to do yard work and just watch movies on my day <laughs> off so hey i'll take it hey there you um, go um three what do we say 3.48 so right around that three five do you so i know untapped we'll get into that a little bit later but that's one reason I really like Copen Ross because it's big on our show, and you guys seem to do a great job with Untapped. I love that you have your whole menu, and it always seems quite accurate too, which I really appreciate. Um, so I guess let's start three, four, eight. Do you agree with that rating? I'll let you, I'll let you start, Lisa. Um, what I would, would you rate say it? I would probably rate it just a little bit higher because I really enjoy um, more of the European taste um to a colch and, and this one has that bready flavor and i really like it so i would probably give it like a 3.8 oh okay okay i would give this i like this one a lot i also like that bready colch german belgian style i think we'd have to go with german right <laughs> i think yes. you're right yeah um the only problem i have is it's 4.8 it's my day <laughs> off i like to get drunk so i'm giving it a three two five <laughs> <laughs> um, I like this as a good starter beer any day of the week. Like you guys said, the breadiness, the maltiness comes through very nicely. Um, I'm going to give this a 3.75. Um, yeah, I, I like this beer a lot. Nicely done. Um, cool. That's where I'm at. All right. Well, overall, a good beer and a nice light drinking beer to start the show with, which is, of course, the first beer of the day. It's not. It's totally <laughs> not. Um, I guess before we get started, a big thank you again to The Lounge for letting us do this. Uh, make sure you visit their website, loungeboise.com. Uh, get some of their growlers. I know they're still having their special, the Bike Route Stout. Normally 35 You can get it for 15 if you name drop Brunomics. All right. Now, back to Lisa. Cope and Ross. It's a freaking cool place. I like it a lot. Got the shirt uh, because it has a bottle opener on it. So... Check out their swag. They have great swag, but so not a brewery, a growler slash prowler restaurant. Restaurant tap house. Tap, yeah, tell us a little bit about uh, who you started it with, why you started it, why you named it Cope and Ross. So um, originally, our the name of our uh, corporation is Tailgate Growlers Incorporated, and we. We got our name all set up, and we were gonna decorate our place with truck tailgates, and and it's gonna be really cool. And the tailgate bar opened, <laughs> like a week after we got our articles of incorporation. So we decided we didn't want to use tailgate growlers because we were afraid that we would be associated with a business that had nothing to do with us. So then we started brainstorming with our um, graphic designer, and I really wanted to to have a, a wine growler fills and cider and you know a really big selection of beer 
And so I didn't want it to sound like a guy place. I wanted it to be somewhere where, you know, people could, women or men could come in and, and, and drink beer and cider and wine. So she said, you know, you got to be careful with what you call it because it's, that'll, that'll go into your brand. And um, honestly, I went off to the restroom. We were at 10 Barrel, and I went off to the restroom and came back, and they had it all figured out. Um, <laughs> when, my <What>? <laughs> <laughs> when, my, when my husband and I um, got together, I didn't change my name. So my name was Lisa Copenspire. My husband's name is Chuck Ross. And um, all of our friends started referring to us as the Copenrosses because they didn't know what to call us. <laughs> they didn't know what to call us the Copenspires or the Rosses or so. One of my friends just came up with the Copenrosses and everybody was calling us that. So this friend of ours that was our graphic designer said, "Why don't you call it Copenross?" It's like, okay, that that that's great. You know, she said your your brand glass is totally empty. You can fill it with whatever you want. So we still kind of took the, the idea of kind of a, um, you know, the barn wood and the cement floor kind of look, um, kind of like what we had in mind for the um, tailgate growlers. But um, then we went looking for a place to, to be, right? And I really wanted to be somewhere that wasn't downtown because, frankly, I hate parking downtown. And I... <laughs> I wanted some place with really good parking and um, that was kind of central, not, not really Meridian, not really downtown Boise. So we started looking along Overland and Fairview and um, every place we looked, nobody wanted just a growler fill place, a beer place. Um, the, the people that run the strip malls, you know, they, they want to keep a good variety of stuff in the strip malls. So we started looking at uh, the Hillcrest Shopping Center, and um, they said, you know, I don't think Albertsons will be okay with you if you if you don't do food. So we decided, I have always wanted to open a restaurant. My husband's always wanted to open a bar. So we decided to do the growler fills with food. And the, the idea was um, then, you know, families can come in, and, and, and it's really been awesome because we have a ton of, um, local bench people that, you know, bring their kids in and have craft soda and it, it's worked out really good. But, um, the restaurant part has added a lot of, uh, extra things that we didn't think about that it make it difficult. Well, oh yeah. I th definitely think that helps because one problem with too much beer is it can limit your audience for sure. Yeah. So it is important to be able, you know, if you had got kids, I would imagine, it's nice to be able to go somewhere where they also feel comfortable. And Copen Ross does provide that. And I love the patio of wherever, whenever we're allowed to do that again, I always laugh walking there and it's saying, uh, well-behaved dogs and their owners are allowed yeah. on the patio. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> the dogs come first. We thought about putting a uh, sign like that inside with reference to kids. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I could totally see that happening. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's pretty great. Um, what's your favorite type of food that you guys do there? I love the pretzels, personally. Shout out to the pretzels. Good old fat German style pretzels. They're delicious. I, I love pretzels. That's why we ended up with those those pretzels. Um, the the my two favorite food items are probably the pulled pork si sandwich and the French dip. I love French dips. Mm -hmm. love um, but yeah, I think that the pretzel, the French dip, and the pulled pork sandwich are probably our biggest sellers. It's strange to me how much better food becomes if you can dip it in something. There's like, there's got to be something scientific <laughs> yeah. about that. It's the one-two uh, step combo. Pretzels yeah. and cheese, yeah, the French dip and the au jus, like, mm. I don't know, and chips and queso. Something to whatever. know. Awesome. We, we are <laughs> open right now. Our dining room's at half capacity, and we have new baby Bavarian pretzels. So, you know, with the COVID situation, if people aren't comfortable sharing a giant pretzel, we have baby Bavarian pretzels now. So you can have your own little pretzel and, and eat it without... Yeah. Genius. Happen to share with somebody that, else. That's a perfect segue because we're obviously the a lot of the reason we're doing this is the COVID situation has made it a little bit difficult for a lot of local businesses. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you guys specifically have. So if you want to, what's what's this journey been like for you guys? Did you have to shut down? Um, coming back, I know. So you said you're at limited capacity. 
the smaller pretzels. That's a smart idea. But what's <laughs> your guys' journey been through this whole thing? Well, we originally we we tried to to keep everything the same and just offer to go and curbside. Um, I really thought about delivery, but honestly, um, there's some insurance um, things you have to think about, and I was just like, okay, I don't I don't really want to deal with this if we can get get through it and. Um, I jumped all over the government aid and, and we got some help to get us through. Um, if we can get going again in, in July or so, we'll be okay. Um, I'm really hoping that people will, will um, take the measure seriously right now so that we don't have to shut down again. Um, we opened for the first time on, on Saturday and we had great support. It was a really good Saturday. Excellent. But yeah, we cut our menu down to to basically just our pretzels and our, our beer cheese and then to go growlers. And we, we used to have a really, a really good price on our growler fills. Um, and we did that because with 60 taps, you know, we, we want to keep the beer moving and the growler fills really, really help with that. So we, our business model was to have really good prices on our growlers and then really make our money on our pint sales. So when our pint sales went away, we had to get a little more competitive on our growler growler fill prices. So my husband and I went through and um, redid our whole menu and, and um, increased our growler fill prices according to the prices of our kegs. Well, that makes, makes perfect sense. sense, though. It really does. And I, I will say when this year, I definitely had the best growler and growler <laughs> prices. That was a big reason. Well, and it's close to where I live, so that also helps. <laughs> uh, but, but the price thing, well, and I... I'm glad you brought that up because I've been a big advocate of places like yourself, restaurants, smaller businesses that have remained open. I absolutely think there should be an upcharge. 100% there should. <laughs> it's got to be so much more difficult to make money in places like that when you can't actually have anybody come in and sit down. So, yeah. The, the thing that's been um, strangest to me is uh, – you know, certain certain businesses have quit doing growler fills because you know it's it is higher risk for for COVID. But um, we take and uh, change our, our gloves and 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 sanitize in between every single customer. Mm -hmm. We use fresh towels to um, clean growlers off. So we've been been filling growlers, you know, through this whole thing. And I've actually had people on Facebook tell me, "Well, you're not supposed to be filling growlers." No, nobody told me I wasn't supposed to be filling growlers. That's just um, things that people are doing to try to help the situation mm -hmm. um, on their own. And, and and I really don't feel that, you know, filling people's growlers as long as you're taking precautions and, and sanitizing in between each person is really high risk. Oh, I agree a thousand percent. And I think that's always been something, and I've tried to be a little bit more of an advocate that this is a lot of breweries is, like, if you're brewing beer, the first three rules are sanitation, sanitation, and then sanitation. Mm -hmm. The same for if you're pouring it and you want to have good, clean tap lines. You don't want to hand somebody a dirty glass or a dirty growler. So I, I absolutely agree. Just be s smart about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we super applaud your efforts. Yeah. Lisa, I want to pivot for a quick moment. Um, you had mentioned something that piqued my interest. You, you had 60-plus tap lines. 60. That's a lot. Um, so how do you guys choose what beers to bring on tap there? So my husband, um, he uses Untapped and other um, internet uh, beer rating uh, locations. I'm not even sure what the other sure, one is. Sure, probably like Brewer's Advocate or Beer yeah, Advocate. Beer yeah, I think it's Beer Advocate. Sorry, that's the right one. But primarily Untapped. And, um, but we also buy beer from some of our local brewers that – that we know and we like their their uh, beer, e even if it's it's not ever been rated on Untapped. Um, so we try to keep a, a good a good mix between things that you can't get at the local breweries and then some of the favorite local breweries, um, so we can support local and also um, bring in a good selection of different stuff. Nice. People can't get around here. Uh, we're going to drink a different stuff real quick, and then I, I actually want to delve into that a little bit more because I am fascinated with the logistics of beer. Um, what do we got now, William? The everyday, once a day, give yourself an IPA. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can't make that name up. Can't make it up. I mean, somebody made it up. So <laughs> Not us. Not us, though. 
So uh, I know nothing about this beer. Besides, apparently, it's an IPA. It's a double IPA. Double! Lisa, you said double IPAs are the double only IPAs you drink. <laughs> she did say <laughs> that. Let's get in not that. So Not only. Evil Twin Brewing, 9%, 75 IBUs, uh, 3.96 rating on Untapped. Hot damn. Wow. Hot damn. Not bad at all. I like Evil Twin Brewing a lot, so I look forward to this. Every day, once a day, give yourself an, an IPA. IPA. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Thank you, Lisa. Dang, 396. That's a freaking rating. Yeah. I love IPAs, too. I'm excited. The milkshake, I love them. They don't like me as much, though. Be Whoa. Careful. Complex. What are your thoughts on this one? I'm trying to, like, figure out what's going on in my mouth right now. So, when we were messaging each other, you said you were going to bring some of your favorites. Tell us what you like about this one. Well, um,. As some people know, they've they've uh, they read the interview that uh, Michael Deeds did with me when we opened. I'm not an IPA fan, and that was part of our um, our deal with opening is I, I wasn't going to have all of our taps be IPAs, but we always have eight to ten, sometimes twelve IPA taps, right? Because it's that's what's popular. Yeah, yeah. it's what's popular. Um, but uh, I I I can't handle the bitter. Our best-selling IPA is probably Barley Brown's uh, Palette Jack. Fucking of course it is. It's a tasty beer. We Yeah, we sell the heck out of that thing, and I cannot drink it. That is the only beer I cannot drink. I love IPAs. I'm straight up the IPA, bro. I'll be the first <laughs> one to tell you that. And I follow a lot of beer sites, and so many people are like, Oh, Palette Jack, it's fucking in Idaho. Yay, Palette Jack. So I get a six-pack, Vic come over, and I'm like, let's see what this is all about. I'm pretty excited. It's supposed to be the IPA of the whole fucking beer community right now. And we tried it, and we were both like, it's fine. <laughs> it's cool, man. It's fine. <laughs> yep. I'm surprised by how many people get so hard about that <laughs> one because it is not for me. And I l typically love that kind of beer. But anyways, back to this <laughs> one. <laughs> so I think I like this one because I don't like IPAs typically, and it's a little sweet. The milkshake aspect, I think, helps. It definitely does have some sweetness to it. Um, and the other thing is, yeah. it's not bitter. No. I, I really can't do bitter. Which yeah. is crazy most because... Of, most of the double IPAs are not bitter there. IBUs are super more, high. 9% yeah, yeah. and 75 IBUs, you're definitely usually going to be tasting that, especially with it saying it's a double dry hopped Imperial IPA. So that means the hops are typically added pretty late. Um, but yeah, something about that lactose and vanilla bean just sweetens it right up. <laughs> yeah, it's very nice though. The sweetness really adds to it. And it's not overbearing at all. It's very... Very subtle, and I appreciate it. It's and good. this is popular. 3.96. That's coming from fucking 22,000 ratings. Dang. So people really like this one. What do you rate it then, Lisa, since you enjoy it? It is an IPA. IPA. It is an IPA. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> Double IPA. <laughs> um, I would probably I would probably give it a, like a 3.7. Okay. Okay. I'd agree with that, actually. I'm right around there. Um, I avoid things that have lactose in them for reasons you'll find out in a few minutes. Uh, <laughs> but it's still a very tasty beer. Do you have somebody it is that can fill in for me when you get <laughs> yeah. it? Uh, yeah, we're, 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 we're in it now. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I think 375. I do like the sweetness, but I also don't like the sweetness because I do like that bitter kind of IPA aspect to it, which it has. I think almost a four is a bit high for this beer I overall agree. though i agree with that yeah i'm gonna triple down to the 375 with you guys it's super drinkable um I, I like the sweetness where it's at honestly it's not um a problem for me I, it's it's refreshing in the sense that it is an ipa and it has a little sweetness element to it and this is probably one of the first times from a, a milkshake style ipa that i've actually got like a vanilla bean flavor profile to it so kudos to evil twin mm -hmm. it's kind of good it definitely tastes like what they purport itself to be and that always g gets points in our book straight the up the name makes me laugh because i don't like ipas and to say i really like every day once a day drink an ipa there we go <laughs> yeah. one hundo yeah <laughs> so the first beer we had was from washington this is from 
New York. Do you have much of a difficulty? And I know Evil Twin's a little bit different because they're massive and they have pretty good distribution. But what are some of the challenges from getting beer locally to getting beer either across the other side of the country or even from a different country? Oh, it, it's really it's really quite frustrating. And most people don't realize this. I know my husband and I didn't realize it until we opened our place. Um, we don't have any control over you know beer out of state. We can go anywhere in Idaho and get beer and bring it back to our place. But um, anything from any other state has to come from the distributor. So we really have to, huh. we really have to talk to our distributors if our customers are coming in and saying, I really want you know beer from this specific brewery. We have to hook up with one of our distributors and, and try to get them to bring it in. Interesting. So you huh. couldn't specifically have like some brewery from Colorado reach out and be like, hey, do you want our beer? It's like, not unless you're going through Stein or, or whoever. Like Hayden, uh, or, Hayden yeah. or Stein. Hayden. Yeah. And we huh. we actually buy quite a bit of beer from Northwest Northwest Specialty um, because oh. they do carry the, the um, different stuff. Like my uh, Cascade Lakes or Cascade Brewing um, uh, one that we're going to sample next. Um, they carry a lot of sours. They they carry um, Revision Brewing and a bunch of different brewers that are kind of smaller and, uh, and uh, kind of off the wall. Okay. Interesting. I guess that makes perfect sense. I wouldn't have thought about that, but knowing the weird logistics and laws from state to state with beer. Yeah, makes that would sense. would be a motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Fortunately, the, the local brewers can um, deliver to us directly or anybody from within the state of Idaho. That is pretty cool. Cool. Can that you actually, like, go and get them from brewers? Like, mm -hmm. let's say you wanted to go to Bear Island. Can just you just, take like, a truck, pick up a keg, pick up a keg, down, bring it back? Yep. Hell yep. yeah. That's cool. <laughs> right on. Okay. That is pretty cool. Um, so you don't like IPAs. What do you like? What is your – if there's – a beer you're gonna go to you've been like it's been a long day i just put in 10 hours at the shop or the day job the brewery this employee was kind of an a-hole i need me a beer what are you reaching and grabbing uh one of two things either um my absolute favorite beer my go-to beer is cali creamin Oh really? Do you like I the creamsicle or just the? We just got the creamsicle. I am so hooked. I'm a sucker yep. for And that I one. didn't know if you guys had oh reviewed God. it yet, or I would have brought that. It's, uh, I don't know if we've we, we've probably reviewed it, but it's a beer we drink often. I I literally buy that six pack on the regular. I've had so many <laughs> so many customers come in and tell me that that is delicious, and mm -hmm. so I have been harping on Chuck to bring it in, and he just got it in like two days ago. Are you so. doing it uh, normal or nitro? Normal, because okay. we can't fill, gr well, we don't fill growlers with nitros. Um, Fair enough. <laughs> and then uh, my second favorite beer just came on tap, and that is Cucumber from uh, Bear Island. I haven't tried that one yet. Bear Island is absolutely one of my more favorite breweries in Idaho. Uh, hopefully one we have on here soon. <laughs> uh, their Idaho Potato Ale is probably my favorite Idaho beer. I fucking love that beer. But I have not had the cucumber. They also have a beer like Christmas in Your Mouth, I think, yeah. which is fantastic. That's super good. That is so delicious. I love that. And we usually have Chocolade on all the time because um, that was the first keg we blew. Really? Of beer. Oh. The first keg we blew was a cider keg. The second keg we blew was Chocolade from Bear Island. So Ooh, well we that's always cool. order big on Chocolade. We still have Chocolade on tap. Um, that's because cool. yeah, because we love that beer. Do you yeah. still have that keg just hanging out? The blown keg? <laughs> no, we reused. don't. We have a picture of it though. <laughs> there you go. There it is. Um, but their their cucumber, it is the most unusual Kolsch I've ever had. It's it's got a very distinct cucumber flavor. Is it like cucumber water? Because I love cucumber water. It's like water. cucumber water I love it. and a made into a Kolsch. It is absolutely delicious. I'm already sold. I'm already sold. Well, especially from Bear Island, shout out to those guys, veteran owned. Uh, huge supporters of that. I'm not sure what their tap house is, but I know before it was always happy hour for military <laughs> and veterans, which we're a big fan of that. We stuff have uh, military and dis uh, veteran discounts for us too so if 
military and veterans come in, um, let us know. 10% discount. Hell yeah. Very Especially cool. since it's almost yeah. Memorial Day, so make sure you're taking care of those vets. Buy them a beer. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that's awesome. So then my third favorite is Bourbonic Plague. Ooh, that seems like a segue. <laughs> seems like a segue. Segue. I so for, first off, that's a fucking great name. I for love this time. Especially right, right now. Right? I mean, Bourbonic Plague is the perfect thing to be drinking right now. I just want to say that I placed my hand here. I did not know he was going to place a beer here. Thank you, Will. I just want to say that. <laughs> Do you want to step in and show the people your sweet shirt? Will? <laughs> we might be giving out this way. In fact, we are definitely giving that one away. Not and Jerry, can you tell us a little bit about some about that t-shirt? Probably not the one he's wearing, but one just like it. Uh, we will do a post later on uh, where we'll have these, and you'll have to tag us. Tag, or not tag us. Follow us. Follow Cope and Ross. Follow Lounge at the End of the Universe. Tag a friend, and we'll pick a winner, and you can win some swag. We'll do that on either Instagram or Instagram and Facebook. So Thank you. Spice up that wardrobe with some Coban Ross swag. Uh, yeah, bubonic plague seems to be a sign of the time. So excellent choice, especially Bur- with the naming. Bubonic plague. Oh, sorry. Bur- Bur- God. Oh my oh God. No. Yes, I can smell the bread. <laughs> wow. What do we know about this sour? I don't know. Besides, it smells sour. My my husband hates sours. Hates them, huh? so strong word. I, yeah, I don't know if I hate sours, but they are certainly, s- certainly not my favorite type of beer by any stretch. I do appreciate the complexity that mm. goes into making it. It's not a simple task. This is from you said. Oh, Cascade Brewing. You brought that yeah. up earlier. They're out of Portland. Twelve percent, twelve percent on Untapped. This blend of strong dark porters was aged in oak, wine, and bourbon barrels, then blended with a dark porter. That had been brewed with vanilla beans and cinnamon. This blend was then aged an additional 14 months on dates. <laughs> so my my husband um, Whoa. lets me take a girls' trip every year to Portland, and this is part of my pilgrimage. We go to Cascade Barrel House, and they have an entire beer list of sours, like every type of sour that you could possibly imagine. And I had no idea they distributed in Idaho. So when I got back last year, he had a Cascade Brewing Sour on, and we had a new category. It was called Lisa's Stash. So we have Chuck's Stash, it. which is typically some dark bourbon barrel aged or whiskey barrel aged beer. Um, now we have Lisa's Stash, which is tip- typically a barrel aged sour. That's awesome. Oh, right, that's love that. that's super, super rad. Cute. Um, this is a, this is a, this is a sour. This is a beer, bold it really and is. in your face. There's um, a lot going on complex. with that description. It's so delicious. Like, you they know. took some time, but it's not tart. It's not offensive. At 12%, like, I thought it would, like, walk right in and kick me square in the dick. That's <laughs> not the case. It actually did a little <laughs> nice, gentle backhand beard stroke and then a hug. Yeah. And whispered in my ear that it's going to be okay. We're going to get drunk. Oh. It's going to be nice. It told me positive <laughs> things about <laughs> myself. <laughs> yeah, I was this incredibly is excited. A good sound. I am I am impressed cuz like when I took that smell, <laughs> that breath hit well, When ya. I said I had a sour, you made a face. I yeah. No, I'm I'm not far <laughs> off from Chuck on his opinions of sours. I'm really not. How does what does he think of this one? I I think he'll actually drink this you one. You think he will? It's that that bourbon barrel aged, huh? That helps. A really small taster glass. Just that'd be about it. No, same thing. No <laughs> matter what the sour, no matter how much I like of it, about four or five ounces is is my max on that one. And it's just like next. Yeah, this is a bold beer. There's a lot happening here. Um, it's really good. Um, I don't have any untapped on me right now about where this is about. Oh, oh but I do actually have it right here. Sorry. I sorry. read the description, but not anything further We switched than that. roles. Usually it's me, but it Jerry is. has it this time. <laughs> so um, um, 11,000 ratings, 4.22. Holy crap. That wow. is quite the rating out of 14,000 check-ins. Um, also... Are you guys making sure our beautiful host from the lounge, Coral, is getting her share of beer also? Okay. Did you try it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a beer. I love sour. I like that. Oh God, it's, I love sour. It's, 
It's <laughs> no, it is a it is a she sour drinker. Did not make sour. a good face. <laughs> Paula, Paula, have you had this? I'm curious what your thoughts are, man. Paul loves it. <laughs> Paul is our sour Cheers, drinker. Paul. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. I think this is a really great beer. Honestly, I like where it's rated. I would probably give this a four. Personally, sours aren't they're not super huge in my realm of a repertoire of beers, but I can appreciate the complexity that goes into it. What it is, like a sour dark beer, super rare. Um, I think it's really good and exactly what it purports itself to be. And if you know me. I love when a beer tells me what it purports to be and the flavor profile matches up. So, yeah, I would give this a four off the top. What do you think, Jay? Uh, I think this beer is going to give me fucking heartburn. <laughs> like, I really like it, and I thought it was a safe place, and then it tripped me and gave me a top rope elbow drop right oh. on the chest. Okay. I, uh, I, I was like going to go. Macho Man style. I was going to go RKO yeah, out of nowhere, out of but nowhere. I mean. <laughs> um. It's still really good, but this is intense. And, uh, again, I definitely don't think I could drink more than a few ounces of it. Sour is not my thing, but there was love that went into this beer for sure. Beautiful description. You can tell great effort by Cascade Lakes. I will not disrespect it. I'll give it a 3.5. But I, I, I can't. I can't do the four because we always rate, like, drinkability, right? How often do I want to go back to this? And for some people, if you like this, I get it. I could see it. This would be a maybe pleasant beer Yeah, I have customers that have been off. waiting for us to put this back on tap. I believe it. Yeah. I believe it. I'm not one of those customers. <laughs> yeah. You know, honestly, I could see myself getting back to this like once a week. Definitely maybe just a crowler for sure. <laughs> um, I know it's – I appreciate the love and the understanding and the – work ethic that went into this like one thing that i tell my customers you know what i do is i fill a crowler of something that i really love because then it'll last like three months in the in the can mm -hmm. and then i pour it into one of my little 32 ounce growlers and then i can have a glass for a few nights after i open it so that's what i do with this beer. very nice okay that's really <laughs> smart well this is i think just everything that goes into it the 12 percent it's a great, like, conversation beer. So I can definitely see if you go to a beer share or a barbecue with people that like good beer, this <laughs> would be a hell of a sour to take over, and you're going to have one of the best chats of the night with this for sure. You definitely don't want to sit down and drink a whole crawler by yourself. Oh, my God. No, I can't yeah. imagine how <laughs> hard and violent I would burp after that and what it would taste <laughs> like. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We went over that a little bit. The... Uh, Shit. I talked about the Hillcrest Shopping. Hillcrest Shopping. <laughs> Overland and Orchard, for those of you playing <laughs> along at home, is basically <laughs> located in the Central Bench area. Um, one of my favorite areas. I grew up there, so it, I love it, it really so hard. It really is a cool place. Um, I don't want to give them credit, but right next to Albertsons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You Shit. know where Blockbuster used to be? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> where that Idaho, Idaho pizza, pizza is now. <laughs> there you go. Let's go with that one. I have to tell you. The Hillcrest Albertsons manager is a very big customer of ours. Oh, really? He's a great guy. So okay. <laughs> good, good. Cool. I, okay. I, I made some angry tweets and Facebook posts when that whole <laughs> thing went down. If you don't know what we're talking about, Google it, I guess. Google Unless it. Unless you have anything to say about it, Lisa. You don't well, have to say anything about no, it. No, I, I, I'm totally fine with it. I mean, <laughs> my husband and I, on advice of our lawyer, did not say anything Um when the whole thing was going on, but Albertsons sued us mm -hmm. um, for uh, violating the um, covenances, basically, of the subdivision or the um, shopping mall. We have growlers. You can't. <laughs> my Albertsons they, they, they don't have growlers. It was it was external uh, beer sales, uh, right? You know, to go beer sales. Um, it was kind of a, a deal where, you know, the bakery went in and that was kind of the, the last straw of, of doing things that, that our, our uh, landlord wasn't supposed to do. So it, it, it fortunately, the Central Bench Neighborhood Association stepped up and um, went to bat for us and sent letters to Albertsons. And Hell yeah. It, 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 it totally cheered me up seeing um, people that were our, our awesome customers stepping up for us because we we were under advisement not to do anything mm -hmm. right um so uh i don't know if that whole thing has been resolved but albertson's 
um, drop their lawsuit against us and the bakery. And um, like I said, the, the manager of the Hillcrest Albertsons comes in and, and, and eats and drinks at our place all the time. He's a Excellent. super nice guy. So Excellent. That's super rad to hear. Yeah, once again, that's why I'm, I'm just a central bench kid. I mean, oh, same, <laughs> at same the end thing. of the day, I, I love it. Great people. That's fantastic. We're to on hear. the bench. I, that's my definitely my hood. No, I, that was one thing I loved, and it was it was kind of cool because the internet, especially social media, I mean, it's a tool, right? And it all depends on how you use that tool, and it shows how often people can be tools. But this <laughs> is one of the fair exceptions when that whole drama went on, where it really showed how well it can band together and the community can and you know it when you fight for the little guys sometimes hey there are a lot more of us than the big guys and that it was a great w i yeah thought. It, w it was not a bad thing for us we got mm -hmm. really really busy for like two or three weeks so. hell yeah <laughs> that's awesome to hear so sales even picked up that's <laughs> great oh i can guarantee we wouldn't have had a few crowlers for the show specifically oh well, one hundo yeah it's like oh we're going there <laughs> we're making that happen for sure Thanks uh, for helping us pay our legal bills. Oh, you're very <laughs> welcome. Thanks for Anytime. giving us great beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I feel like that's a fair trade-off. Easy. Um, hopefully, that's not a contest you ever have to worry about again. <laughs> yes. Um, let's see. Well, um, looking at some of our list of questions here, do you, do you guys have any plans of grabbing a second location for Cope and Ross? Uh, not at this time. No. Okay. No. This is kind of like um, I work – at Micron full time right now. Um, my husband used to work at Micron full time, and he took a, a, a package to to quit and um, open our place. And um, we we're just kind of hoping this would be a like retirement <laughs> retirement job for us. And um, frankly, you know, we we're, we're not making any money yet. We're just having fun and and paying the bills. So. Um, if this were to to go better in a few years, then yeah, we'd certainly consider it. But right now, we're just trying to keep our heads above water, especially with the the whole COVID mm -hmm. situation. Yeah, I would imagine that has to be rough for a lot of places right now. Like, ugh. Well, w and we super appreciate you guys being open, and what you are able to provide for this community is undoubtedly unpriceable in a lot of ways. So just big thanks <laughs> so want everybody to stay healthy right well, absolutely it's important to stay healthy it's important to stay smart we're starting to get stuff open again so please follow the procedures yeah, yeah. and don't don't make us have another second <laughs> shutdown because yeah, it's not difficult to just follow the little things. Mm -hmm. It's not about your pride. It's not about whatever. It's about getting everybody back on top as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be difficult as long as you just do it. That's all I you got to do. You wash your fucking it. hands. I, yeah. Wash them. I, I really don't want to have to shut down again. So Nobody if everybody does, can, no. can be good wearing your mask when you go out in public. Of course, you can't wear your mask when you're eating and drinking. Sure. But you know we're gonna wear our masks when we when we serve tables and. <laughs> Not that. <laughs> that disturbs me. Yeah, I, I'm, my hands are full, <laughs> but I mean I, I see what you're doing. <laughs> Thanks, Will. Uh, yeah, absolutely, and it's it, you know we'll all get through it, and the sooner and more often you wear it, the sooner we'll be able to stop. Yep. Don't ruin recess for the rest of us kids. Uh, so I want I want to go back to a little bit about what you guys have on tap because 60 different handles usually. So if I recall, so you got beer, wine, sours, so ciders. Oh, I guess you wouldn't have wine on. We tap. have s we have wine on tap. We have 10 yeah. wine taps, but that would make it 70. We don't uh -huh. typically have more than four different wines on tap right now because it just doesn't sell fast enough. Sure, sure. Uh, would you also have like uh, kombuchas? Yes. Is that right? Sodas. Kombuchas and craft soda, yeah. There you go. We Cra just expanded our, our kombucha selection to three taps. And we have um, Good Vibes and Idaho Kombucha, which are both local kombucha places. And they have awesome kombucha. And recently, Idaho Kombucha brought in, um, it was called Chai, Chai Idaho. It was a chai. It's a great name. Yeah. It was so delicious with an amber beer. I mix red light, Irish red. Um, Mac and Jacks, um, 
one other one it it was so delicious are you a fan of blending the beers i am a or beverages? huge fan i almost brought my peanut butter cups for you guys because you said you had reviewed coco cow and peanut butter milk stout from mm -hmm. belching beaver my favorite thing in the malty and roasty category is to mix the peanut butter milk stout with the coco cow that sounds amazing it is so delicious my husband on the other hand rolls his eyes every time i mix something together he is not a beer cocktail person. listen i think we're more on that side because we've actually had a few episodes specifically on blended beers uh -huh. and there are some times where we drink so many beers where i'll be like fuck it what's this beer and this one taste <laughs> together um <laughs> i think i i definitely think there's some legitimacy and some enjoyment and fun creative stuff you can do with blending beers oh 100 percent. and lisa why didn't you bring the <laughs> peanut butter cup <laughs> beer <laughs> i mean we reviewed them separately <laughs> <laughs> i totally thought about it because but i didn't know if you guys were like gonna like poo poo me if i no. brought a mixed beer no. so that's no, why i brought no. that's why i brought the next one is the huckleberry lemonade okay. because it is a brewer mix so my husband says is if the brewer wanted you to mix it he would tell you to mix it. So the Huckleberry Lemonade, both flavors are from the same brewer. There you go. That, that's pretty fair. And I, okay. I've seen brewer blend packs, too. What was the one you grabbed, Will? From uh, the New Belgium Brewing. New Belgium before they sold out. Cool, 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 hmm. cool. But I'm sorry. You know, uh, one brewery is not going to think of mixing beer with another brewery. And I just love... I, I find two great flavors. It is so fun to mix stuff together and see what happens. Absolutely. Well, one that we did that I loved, you're, you kind of reminded me with your peanut butter stout, but it was, we did the jam, what was it, the jam The jam berry? band? Yeah. Peanut butter jam and jelly. And then a peanut butter stout with that one together. Yeah, and it was very peanut butter jelly and hot damn it was delicious it was super good i can't yeah. remember what peanut butter stat we used it might have been the belching beaver one actually. it was the belching beaver absolutely <laughs> um thank you so yeah blend we beers i don't know i i kind of scoff at tradition because like in beer or most industries because it's just peer pressure from dead people we ain't got anything to live up to <laughs> anymore with them they're dead so drink what you want to do blend what you want if you enjoy it that's all i give a shit about I've talking I've about I've a snake bite yeah i yeah See, I've seriously thought about um, having a, a weekly special, doing a mix-up every single week, a new mix-up, and doing a special on it. Because I just, I, as soon as I tasted the creamsicle or the dreamsicle, whatever it's called, mm -hmm. um, for Mother Earth, I was like, oh my gosh, all I can think of is mixing this with some chocolate or um, oh one of our... God. I yeah. think about oh that. my gosh. Well, Coco Cow with I'm dreamsicle. I'm whispering. That so that would you be just amazing. blowed my mind. And I, I, I don't know. I love stuff like that because there was a, a bartender friend I had a long time ago. And when I was in Twin Falls, a brewer friend, or he would always oh, mix them. And he would specifically mix them to try and get crazy different colors on them, too. Uh, and I can't remember what he did. But he had like a three blend of like a cream ale, uh, red, and something else. But it just looked like candy corn when it sat in the glass. Oh and you can gosh, just have I a lot. That. And it was pretty yummy, too. You have a lot of fun with stuff like that. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. Um, I think I'm curious now ca as can you buy a mixed crowler or growler? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Can. Absolutely. Rad. Super cool. But the thing to keep in mind is over time, if you keep that crowler for a while, it, it starts to separate and it just. So drink quickly. Yeah. yeah OK. Yeah. <laughs> if you drink it within a few weeks, it's probably <laughs> fine. But if you're to keep it in your cooler for a few months. Listen, if I'm holding on to a beer for a couple of weeks, there's something wrong with me. Okay, <laughs> Lisa? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, because I guess you don't want to shake well with a crowler. Or maybe do that. Or maybe. Shake well every time. <laughs> shake well. You're dumb enough to listen to that advice. Uh, what if, so I'm always fascinated. I, it, so you guys have a lot of different beers. Have there been beers where you're like, I like this one, but it's probably not going to sell well, that exceeded expectations? First ones where you're like, we can't wait to have this beer on that didn't do super awesome. And on the flip side of that, when you have a beer that doesn't do super awesome, doesn't sell like you thought, what do you guys end up doing with it? It, it? it honestly happens all the time, right? Because obviously my tastes aren't the same as everybody else, right? So occasionally we'll put on beers for 
for two dollar beers to try to to get the keg to to just go away but um i've even had stuff that that's super highly rated on untapped that doesn't sell well but typically anything that's rated you know over a 3.5 on untapped does does pretty well on tap i could see that because that can almost be and we've talked about it on the podcast before problematic with untapped with some beer that's rated super high kind of like that sour we just had <laughs> but because it's a niche beer yeah. and if you're a beer drinker's beer and you know what you're going for you're specifically going to maybe seek out that beer or beer that style yeah. so it's going to rate higher but maybe the every man or every lady that wants to drink wouldn't wouldn't want to get down yeah. with that it's definitely a problem but yeah i guess if it doesn't sell discount it and get it get have you tasted your huckleberry it. lemonade yet i haven't let's get down on that speaking of blends it's Beautiful. I'm your huckleberry. It's good. This is a really great beer. This mix is perfectly done between huckleberry and lemon. The sweetness is well balanced on this one, and just the aromatics alone. When you get, it's like it's like a jam almost when oh, you smell it's it. It's so delicious. It's fantastic. Oh, so you said this is what's the name of this cidery again? It's uh, One Tree. One Tree Cidery. They okay. came out of Spokane, Washington. They moved to Boise, and they're getting ready to open a brewery here in Boise. That's awesome. They moved their whole family down here. They're awesome people. No okay. way. That's a, I, I grab this Huckleberry all the time. I'm not a huge cider fan, but there are a handful of ciders that I've had. I like them more than sours um, that just really sit with me. And sometimes they can be overly sweet, but I'm also a suck, sucker for Huckleberry. Like, I'd love it if I'm going to get some pancakes and nice huckleberry they said they, syrup. They buy more huckleberries out of Idaho than any other place. Huckleberries are Idaho and AF. <laughs> they really are. Yeah, second to potatoes and malts. <laughs> True. Um, so this was a brewer recommendation to mix. Yes. Okay. So it's their lemon basil mixed with their huckleberry cider. And I think... We can look this up, but the huckleberry cider is like 6.7%, and the lemon basil, I think, is right around 5%. Yeah. So you get a nice high 5% blend with this one, which is right where it is. This is sweet. Yeah. Yeah. I Good would dessert like to, beer. Uh, it, it is, is a dessert beer. beer. It is. I would like to roll up a pancake and dip it in this. and just <laughs> Breakfast beer for sure, honestly. Um, or an after-dinner beer. I'm trying to figure it out. Either way, I'm all right with Start it. Start the day with it. Finish the day with it. Hey, that's how you complete the circuit. It's hard to rate blends on untapped, but I would totally give this a 375. I, I'm a hundo with you. Yeah, 375. Actually, you know, I'm going to go up to a four, uh -huh. honestly. I'm going to go up yeah, to a four. I, I, I'd good be beer. good with a four. You'd be good with a four also. No, this is yummy. This is a great blend. It's one that I definitely would recommend picking up because it's fun. What a cool color, too. I don't even it's know what beautiful. you call that. Mauve. Mom, <laughs> love. All right. Well, now Vic's gonna ask you some rapid fire questions, <laughs> courtesy of Will. So if you oh. don't like them, uh -oh. yell at Will. They, they oh. fell on the ground. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what you get for throwing things. <laughs> All right. All right. Rapid fire questions. Just go with um the first answer you feel is accurate to you. No okay. problem. If you want to expand, expand. If you don't want to, no. don't have to. You won't embarrass me. Go ahead. I'm not worried about it. Okay. Lisa, you're a great person. Here we go. Nap or workout? Nap. Nap. Easy. Uh, concert or theater? Oh, that's a difficult one. I'm going to go with theater. Excellent. Excellent. Um, Marvel or DC? Marvel. Nice. Cornhole, horseshoes, or ladder ball? Cornhole. Nice. I just watched yesterday on ESPN2. They had the Cornhole Championships. There were championships? Oh, yeah. Sponsored by Johnsonville Bratwurst. Is this on the Ocho? And Manscaped. No, on the Deuce. Dang, okay. ESPN all right. Deuce. God, all right. But I just Gotta loved it. And they there. were all wearing face masks and stuff, too, because the world can't sport. So Cornhole's made it up to ESPN2. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, board games or video games, Lisa? No, oh, that's really difficult. I, that's really difficult. Go with your gut. Um, if we're talking... Settlers of Catan 
RPG, Dungeons and Dragons. Are you going to go Final Dungeons Fantasy. and Dragons? Okay. Or, hmm, I don't know. Dungeons and Dragons would be my. I can see that. I can see that. Yeah, nice. Um, beach or mountains? Hmm. Probably mountains. Noise. Um, would you go, which superpower would you choose to have? I want to be able to read my dog's mind. <laughs> That's so sweet. <laughs> that is not people's mind, but my dog. <laughs> 100%. I love that. Uh, fries or tots? Well, we only serve tots at Copenhagen, so I have to say tots. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's you do you. Say. I don't know who picks fries over tots. <laughs> it's bizarre. Yeah. If that's the option, like, don't just ask me, give it to me. Come on. Um, give it. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Favorite color? <laughs> <laughs> Favorite color? Oh, that's a really difficult question for me. Silver. 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 Is that a color? It is a color. Yes, it's I also love that. <laughs> one of the two words in the English language that I am know of that there's no rhyming word for. <laughs> the other one is also a color. Orange. <laughs> Can't rhyme silver or orange. Try it. At me if I'm wrong. I expect no mentions. <laughs> I expect no mentions. <laughs> Solid. Um man, okay, here we go. Um which is worse, housework or yard work? I love yard work, so I'm going to say housework. Solid. Okay. I'm with you. Uh, fuzzy or smooth? It's a texture issue. Mm, I like fuzzy. Noise. Uh, morning or night? Night. Top or bottom? Top. <laughs> I get it. That was fast. <laughs> Solid work, Lisa. I can't tell if he's blushing. I, you can't. It's a pigment issue. Can't worry uh, about it. Don't worry about it. Oh, that's awesome. Well, we really appreciate you coming on. We appreciate the lounge for hosting. Um, I appreciate Copen Ross. I really like it. Great beer selection, great cider selection, great sour selection. I sounds like a good kombucha selection. I don't know. I don't uh, craft soda. That's intriguing to me. Um, yes, is it kombucha a part of the craft soda? Yeah, or? we have it all under the same category. Okay, cool. But the kids really like the com the craft soda better than the kombucha. I Makes would sense. imagine so. Um, any final thoughts? Any any plugs for Copen Ross? Professional, personal? Let us have it. We're open right now. Fifty percent seating. Call ahead if you want to make sure you get a table. There you go. Excellent. Um, are you guys doing any growler crowler specials or anything like that? We we aren't, but now we're uh, uh, honoring the Boise Beer Buddies. Um, pint. Oh, cool. We're dollar off your first pint if you're a Boise Beer Buddy. Excellent. They are big. We friends of the show for sure we love boise beer buddy so check that out go see cope and ross go get some good beer uh some good pretzels those pretzels are so good y'all do you do the pretzels to go yep get some pretzels to go and our sours are amazing and their sours are amazing <laughs> if you're into that um until next time make sure again check out loungeboise.com for their growlers deliveries and pickups and swap outs and the bike route stout $15 growler if you mention Brunomics. Uh, future shows that they have for everybody, you can buy tickets. 80% uh, go to the artist, 20% goes to the tech crew. Check out their Patreon, patreon.com slash bagel tiger. tiger. Uh, until next time, go drink some beer at Cope and Ross. Be good to each other. Cheers. Thank you so much for coming on. Lisa, cheers. I'm Jerry. I've been Vic. See you. Lisa, thank you.